Thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. After nine years with the Burple Beast, he's getting handed down to my daughter Lucy. <laughs> this shiny new Y Cycles Big Iron V2 is gonna be my winter daily driver. It's cold out here, let's get inside and I'll give you the scoop. So you're probably thinking, why go with Ty Allen and specifically why? After all, you had a salsa muckluck for nine years. And didn't you do a review raving about mucklucks? What gives? Valid point. Availability was a big consideration. Y actually had a medium frame and many of the build components ready to go. No easy task in these supply inhibited times. It also happens that my go-to bike shop, Fitzgerald's and Victor, just became a Y dealer. And what do you know? They were able to mix and match and come up with all the bits that Y didn't have in stock. And next thing you know, Derek, the owner of Fitzy's, an all-around great guy, is meeting me at a random rest stop, delivering me the bike, and boom. Here we are. Here's Luke. Sweet. And then this is for you, and this is Andy. for Andy. Okay, sweet. Leo's bike. Woo! Last year I spent some time filming with JP and his big iron, and it definitely caught my eye. He took it to the Iditarod and came back praising it. Not the OM sponsored, so I better say nice stuff kind of junk. But the bro down, straight dope like Alan, get on this bike, you won't be disappointed. A little background knowledge of the company didn't hurt either. Wise owner Adam Miller grew up in Alaska, worked for 907 bikes, and founded Borealis Bikes. I still remember being at the Fat Bike Summit in 2014 and having my mind blown after demoing the OG Yampa. Still one of the sexiest fatties ever produced. Anywho, I need a bike that's winter expedition and bikepacking friendly for the riding I love to do here in Idaho. This calls for comfy geometry and a stable platform. It needs to feel at home with racks and a ton of cargo and have plenty of clearance in case I decide to run 5 inch tires on 100 mil rims. Selfish I also want something light and nimble when it's running naked and something that can accommodate 29 plus, 27.5 plus plus, or whatever else they come out with for summer adventures. Something that's also pretty to look at is icing on the cake. After much deliberation, I narrowed my shortlist down to three bikes. The Salsa Muckluck, the Corvus Accio, which previously was the Fatback Corvus, confusing I know, and of course, the Y Big Iron. You already know my take on the Muckluck, and I was a Fatback dealer at my shop back in Mammoth. So I have plenty of hands-on experience with the Corvus slash Accio as well. Both bikes check all my main boxes. However, since my Tyne Arvester 29 Plus bike got stolen a few years ago, don't ask, it's a whole other story, I've kind of been jonesing for another titanium bike. Why? How about some industry catchphrases like compliance, vibration dampening, abrasion resistance, forever bike, etc. Which are all legit. I want this bike to outlive me. They're also gorgeous and understated, which doesn't hurt. The Big Iron V2 currently comes as a frame only, frame set with fork, or three complete build options. The frame retails for 3,000 bucks, and the Gucci XX1 Eagle AXS build roughly costs a semester at college, depending on which university. I encourage you to geek out on the Y website at your leisure. I went with the lowest end complete build, which features the GX Eagle kit. This sports a sticker price of $51.49. As I mentioned before, because of supply issues, my bike is a bit of a riddle that Fitzy's helped me solve just to get me out and riding. For the most part, it's still pretty much a GX stock build for now. If you want to get nerdy with my bike specs, all the details and weights for every part, including the substituted items, are in the description below. Why markets the big iron as the ultimate modern fat bike? For this much money, I sure hope so. The medium frame I received weighs in at 4 pounds and 14 ounces on my trusty park scale. How does that compare to a carbon muckluck? Glad you asked. Salsa doesn't provide a carbon frame weight, but the weight of their large muckluck frame set is advertised at exactly 6 pounds. So I calculated what my big iron frame set would weigh by adding in the weights of the fork, seat post clamp, headset, and axles. I came up with 3193 grams or just a hair over 7 pounds. So we can safely assume that the tie frame is a little more than a pound heavier than its carbon counterpart. Interesting to know. Based on feedback, why tweak the geometry of the V2 slightly from the V1 frame? Nothing drastic, but there's a slightly longer top tube, reach, and wheelbase, and a slightly taller stack height. The goal was to improve handling and control at lower tire pressures. They also jumped on board with many other companies by employing SRAM's new UDH, Universal Derailleur Hanger. In addition to streamlining zillions of hanger options out there, it also has a couple cool features. It's designed to give slightly during impact and pivot back and away if your chain jams. And they're only 15 bucks if you need a spare or replacement. A sharp eye might notice in some shots, this frame features the older style derailleur hanger and dropouts. Don't worry, it's shipped without the UDH, but it's on its way. The rest of the frame specs remain the same between the V1 and V2. Sliding dropouts, which are adjustable from 445 to 460 millimeters. This lets you dial in playfulness, account for different wheel and tire combos, and makes it completely single speed friendly. It also has belt drive splits in case you decide to go that route. 
It can clear 26 by 5, 27.5 by 4.5, or 29 by 3 inch tires. It accepts standard BSA threaded bottom brackets over press fit options, which is a huge plus in my book. It also has rack and fender mounts, as well as bottle cage mounts on the seat tube, as well as both sides of the down tube. There's also a third bolt hole on the top of the down tube for accepting cargo cages. What else? What else? <sighs> It also accepts a max 180 mil brake rotor in the rear, 31.6 seat post diameter, and uses integrated headset bearings. The top tube is sloped, which helps for standover and getting on and off the bike, especially in snow. It also features internal cable routing for your shifter, dropper cable, and rear brake. Pretty slick. The big iron is specced with Envy's top of the line carbon fat fork. It weighs in at 765 grams uncut, including the through axle. This puppy is molded in one piece, all the way from the steerer tube down to the dropouts. It clears up to 5.2 inch tires and has internal routing for the front brake line. It also has a flip chip in the dropouts. This way you can switch the rake between 51 and 42 millimeters, optimizing handling for different wheel sizes. I'm really looking forward to messing with it. The only bummer about this fork is from the bike packing side of things. There's no threaded holes on the fork legs to accept bottle cages or cargo cages. This makes strapping gear to the fork a bit more tedious. Regardless, it's pretty sweet. On to the components, first up is the headset, which is a Cane Creek 40, bulletproof and bomber. I've had these on a bunch of bikes, including my Tour Divide Steed, stoked it's included with this build. And yes, if you're wondering about the mix of black and titanium headset spacers, I cut the fork a little longer than normal. I do this on all my bikes to allow for extra bike packing mounts, a fret bar, etc. And then I'll usually cut it a little shorter once it's dialed. Definitely better to start long than too short. The stem is pretty straightforward. It's a Truvative Descendant 31.8 with a 40 millimeter length. It's the shortest stem I've ever had, but I'm hoping it puts me in a comfy upright posture. It's mated to an Uber Light NV M6 carbon handlebar. It has 25 millimeters of rise, five degree up sweep and nine degree back sweep. It tips the scales at 198 grams. Honestly, I'll probably swap it onto my full squish mountain bike and get something with a little more sweep for this rig. The grips are Lizard Skins Charger Evos with custom Revel clamps. If you didn't know, Revel Bikes is Wise sister company specializing in gorgeous carbon fiber full squish mountain bikes. These are single sided lock-ons, very light and seem comfy and cushy with a nice texture. I'll definitely try them out, but I'm pretty set in my ways with grips so these will probably get swapped out too. Seems like every bike worth their salt is specced with a dropper post these days, and this is no exception. This is a Crank Brothers Highline 7 with a 31.6 diameter and 150 millimeters of travel. It's kind of overkill for my intentions with this bike, but who knows, maybe I'll keep it for summer shopping sessions. I do like the Crank Brothers lever with the ball mount for getting positioning just right. The post is held snug with a simple 34.9 Revel seat post clamp. Next up is the saddle, which is a WTB Volt 142 with chromoly rails. I'm very familiar with it as it comes stock on tons of bikes these days. The chromoly is lighter than steel rails and from experience I know the saddle's pretty comfy. The drivetrain is from the battle-tested SRAM Eagle 12-speed family. It has a GX Eagle trigger shifter and derailleur. Because of supply issues with the GX parts, you'll notice an upgraded X01 cassette with the uber wide 10 to 52 tooth range. I've been super intimate with this drivetrain on numerous bikes. The derailleur is clutched to minimize chain slap, the shifts are firm and precise, and I expect it to be very reliable. This leads me to the crankset chainring combo. It features GX Eagle dub fat bike cranks. These ones have 170 millimeter arms and a 30 tooth direct mount chainring. They're middle of the road, but fairly light and pretty stiff. The bottom bracket is a SRAM dub BSA threaded model with a 100mm fat bike width. Again, I'm super thankful it's not a press fit, which pretty much all the carbon bikes come with these days. So I'm hoping for quiet, creak-free riding. And yes, that's a layer of plumber's tape on the threads with a thin coating of anti-seize on the top. It's a pro tip for keeping water out, a snug thread interface, and different types of metal from bonding. The bike isn't specced with any pedals, but I threw on some Crank Brothers double shot ones. I love these pedals for fat biking because they're clipless on one side and flat on the other, which makes them great for riding in snow with big boots. They have a composite body which conducts cold less than metal bodies found on the more expensive versions. They also use the same bearings and are lighter, yet much cheaper. Go figure. Stopping power is applied via SRAM G2 RSC 4 piston brakes. 180 mm rotor in the front, 160 in the rear. I have these exact brakes on my full squish mountain bike and can attest to their power and modulation. There's plenty of oomph to stop a fully loaded bikepacking rig. Many people still fret about hydraulic brake fluid in low temps and I've ranted about it in other videos. In a nutshell, they're fine. I prefer brakes with dot fluid in extremely cold temps because the freezing point is lower than mineral oil. If it makes you nervous, you can switch to mechanical disc brakes like Avid BB7s. I'll be more than happy to take these off your hands. Let's get into the wheels, which are Sun Ringlay Mulefoot SL80s. These are pretty popular in the fat biking world and come specced on many stock builds, including the Salsa Muckluck. They're reliable, not too heavy, and set up tubeless easy. 
Speaking of, they showed up pre-taped with tubeless sealant and valve stems at the ready. Very nice. The rims have a 27.5 inch diameter and an 80 millimeter internal width. They're mated to Sun Ringlay SRC hubs with Wheelsmith double butted black spokes. Hub spacing is 15 by 150 in the front and 12 by 197 in the rear. The bike comes specced with Terrain Cake Eater tires, but they were back ordered when I ordered the bike and I didn't want to wait. So we subbed in these 27.5 Bontrager Narwhals with a four and a half inch width. I'm stoked to try them out. They've got a fairly aggressive tread with a supple 120 TPI casing. This should be nice for low PSI on the soft snow that I often find myself in. They're also easily studdable with Bontrager studs in their insertion tool in case I have to go that route. So this is the all new 2022 Y Big Iron V2. No, I didn't forget. The complete bike weight including pedals and all that jazz comes in at, take a guess. All right, I'll tell you. 29 pounds and 14 ounces. You heard me right, 29 pounds, 14 ounces, just under 30 pounds. That's right on par if not slightly lighter than the comparable carbon mucklock. My next step before shredding is to internally route and trim the brake lines. I'm sure some of you are waiting to call me out on it. Then I'm gonna ride and beat the pulp out of this baby. I'll likely personalize them with certain bits and pieces and probably put them on a diet. And yes, I did say him. My family chimed in and we decided to name our newest member, drumroll, Sylvester. Sylvester, nice to meet you, Sylvester. So yeah, I'll report back to you with a legitimate review in a couple of months. Sound good? Good. If you found anything useful in this video, please give us a like. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you're looking to get a new fat bike, please consider reaching out to Fitzgerald's in Victor, Idaho. They really know they're fat. I upload fresh bike packing and mountain biking content every week, so please consider subscribing to the channel and tapping the notification bell. And pretty please consider joining us on Patreon and helping us give back and pay it forward through our Trail Magic Monday initiative. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.